Good evening. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Be Healthy Church. Yeah, Be Healthy Church session series three, number seven. Number seven. You've made it this far. Well done. Yeah, well done. And uh, we are enjoying it. We are learning. Uh, taken from a scripture, John 10:10, 10, 10, which you all should know. And <laughs> Jesus said that I have come that I might have life in its fullness. Yeah, and we're all about real life. Real yeah. faith, real friends with real food. Absolutely. And uh, it's a lifestyle. It's not just if you are overweight, it is a lifestyle. Because I'm not overweight anymore. No, no. I don't think I'm overweight anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you're overweight at all. No, but we're enjoying feeling healthy. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it's about a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So welcome. Uh, this is BHC Online. You can, uh, if you've just joined us, and this is you're joining. This is the first one. We suggest you can watch this one, but we suggest you go back to week, week number one. one. Yeah, and and just to say that we're not health professionals. No, no. and I think so. he's put that up on a slide now. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we can now uh, start with this, which we do every week. Uh, this bit of scripture. Yeah, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach and the stomach for food, which comes from the Bible in 1 Corinthians. Yeah, 6.12. And uh, so we look at what is good for us. And uh, as you go through life, uh, you, you, you learn. And some of us take a long time to learn. And the problem is we learn from who we listen to and you know over the years i listen mm. to my doctor yeah and then we listen to what the government tell us and what the nhs tell us yeah absolutely yeah. and uh, what's interesting i i mean i've just uh, uh, finished a course on uh, nutrition and uh, i've done i don't know what it is 26 hours training and i thought i'll look up how many hours does the average gp study <laughs> on nutrition it's not a lot i don't think is we'll it? tell you later <laughs> okay. we'll tell you later so let's um, uh, move along, and uh, you, we have asked the question, should the church be a fence at the top of the hill or an ambulance at the bottom? Mm, it's much better to be the fence at the top of the hill. Yeah. Prevention is better than cure. Yeah, but all too often mm. we can be the ambulance, praying for someone's healing when in actual fact we've been eating the wrong type of food. And uh, it, it's it, what is very concerning is that you know, type two diabetes is on the increase. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's not just on the increase for people that are overweight. No. Uh, because no. of the amount of sugar that is being uh, consumed. Consumed. And once upon a time, it was thought, and still thought, by many doctors that once you've got type two diabetes, that's you're, it. You're yeah. doomed. You're on drugs for the rest of your life yeah doomed but we have learned haven't we that with a diet it, type 2 diabetes can be prevented and also reversed absolutely so we're going to watch uh, uh, this uh, video i hope you enjoy it it's really good uh, the question is can it be prevented type 2 diabetes Traditionally, it's categorized as a chronic and progressive disease that's managed over a patient's lifetime through various treatments, including prescription drugs like insulin. Once you contract type 2 diabetes, it's a disease that stays with you for life. But what if we don't think traditionally? What if we wanted to eliminate this disease from a patient's life? What if we wanted to reverse the disease? According to the U.S. National Center for Health Statistics, a chronic disease generally cannot be prevented by vaccines or cured by medication, nor do they just disappear on their own. To treat these chronic diseases, doctors refer to federal guidelines created by associations like the USDA and NHS, which outline protocols for outpatient care and prescriptions. But how effective are these guidelines? All these diseases in modern society that we treat today, we refer to them as chronic diseases, ultimately caused by these federal guidelines. And unfortunately, these guidelines are causing the diseases that we were trying to prevent in the first place. 
While some physicians like Dr. Gerber would like to think outside the box by viewing diabetes as simply a reversible disorder, major U.S. media outlets reinforce the views of federal guidelines. Diabetes is a growing epidemic. And the condition is incredibly widespread. Diabetes can certainly shorten your life if we don't manage it well. Well, a big problem with how we, how we see type 2 diabetes, both from a media perspective and from a, a physician and healthcare perspective, is that a number of people still portray type 2 diabetes as a chronic progressive disease. A New York Times article that came out saying exactly that, talking about how we cannot treat this disease and we have to manage it. And unfortunately, the medications are becoming more expensive to manage type 2 diabetes. Federal guidelines aren't working, and in the meantime, diabetes is progressing in patients. Do we simply ignore the guidelines then? Diabetes is a chronic disease, and it's going to continue to get worse if you follow the guidelines. The guidelines, sadly put out by associations that are supposed to be advocates for people with diabetes. Okay, so if we want to solve the problem, we have to take away the cause. But before we can determine the best treatment for diabetes, we need to zero in on its core cause. How do we treat the disease instead of just the symptoms? If you're a type 2 diabetic, it's a dietary disease. It's a disease of essentially too much sugar. So if you understand it like that, then the answer is to get that sugar out, get it down. Imagine that your body is like a sugar bowl. Over the years, consuming foods high in sugars like sweets, soft drinks, carbohydrates, and more contribute to that bowl of sugar filling up. When you consume too much sugar in your diet for a consistent period, that bowl becomes completely full. There isn't any more room for additional sugar, so when you continue eating it, it spills out into the bloodstream. So when diabetics remove at least a lot of the carbohydrates from their diet, their blood sugars go, goes down, and then they're not diabetic any longer. One of the most popular ways to treat patients once their metaphorical sugar bowl spill over is for doctors to prescribe insulin. Unfortunately, the body begins to develop a tolerance to the drug. The drugs don't actually do anything for the disease. And this is also not controversial because the thing is that type 2 diabetes is a disease of too much insulin resistance. So the treatments that we give are all targeted at blood sugar. What Dr. Fung is saying is that we're currently too focused on treating symptoms. If we look back at our sugar bowl metaphor, we should be thinking about how we can reduce the overall level of sugar still in the bowl so it doesn't keep spilling over. But how do we do that if traditional medical treatments like insulin aren't the complete answer? According to Dr. Elliot Joslin, one way could be a solution that has existed for nearly 100 years, fasting. His study on the subject was published in the Canadian Medical Journal, where he was quoted as saying that temporary periods of undernutrition are helpful in the treatment of diabetes will probably be acknowledged by all after these two years of experience of fasting. It seems patients are already acknowledging the effects of fasting. They come back and they think, I thought I'd be miserable during this whole thing. And they come back and they say, I feel terrific. My weight is down, I'm taking so much less insulin, I'm off of a lot of drugs, and I have so much energy, and my mind is more clear, I've lost that bloated feeling. Of course, fasting isn't the solution for everyone. Instead of a complete abstinence from food, some patients respond better to adopting a low-carb lifestyle. The positive effects of this new lifestyle change can even be felt by patients early on in the process. Initially, when patients are beginning a lifestyle change and shifting to low carbohydrate to help their diabetes. It is so fantastic that within the first few days to couple weeks, we can entirely remove a medication. And it goes beyond deprescribing medication. A low carb lifestyle is a proven long term treatment for type 2 diabetes. There is quite a big evidence base for low carbohydrate, even in type 2 diabetes. So yes, it's evidence-based. Dr. Halberg has been observing the results of low-carb diets for patients with diabetes firsthand. For two years, she led a study at Indiana University Health that demonstrated a reversal in diabetes progression. The study showed a 62% reduction in patients' insulin use and 
100% reduction in the use of sulfonylureas. What we were seeing in the patients with type 2 diabetes was nothing short of remarkable. I mean, we were getting them off of medications. We were seeing normal A1Cs. I just couldn't believe it. At the end of two years, 53.5% of the participants who adopted a low-carb diet as part of the study maintained diabetes reversal. Meanwhile, for those patients who undertook usual care, 0% maintained diabetes reversal, demonstrating that low-carb is an incredibly effective long-term treatment for type 2 diabetes. This can't be good for people in the long term, you know, what, what's happening long term for patients. But again, in my clinic, I have people who have been doing this for years. And, you know, the complication is they have to get used to feeling better. People find that to be pretty easy. We don't see these big complications coming up. People do incredibly well eating this way. As our understanding of the disease of diabetes continues to improve, and we focus on treating the core causes rather than the symptoms, our ability to improve patients' lives increases drastically. People with type 2 diabetes should have hope that this is absolutely a reversible condition. If you're following the right nutritional and lifestyle advice and you're getting appropriate support and guidance as you go, yes, you absolutely can reverse this disease. Wasn't that very interesting? Yes. I, I yeah. find it fascinating. And, uh, uh, and the challenging thing is that there are many, many health professionals, doctors out there that still think the old way because that is what they were taught. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they taught the low fat. Low fat. High carb yeah. diet. And, and yeah. uh, uh, you know, the saturated fat is in mm. when it's processed and uh, mixed with flour, isn't it? That's that's the challenge. Yeah, that, for that's the key, isn't it, to mm. this? Don't mix. That will come uh, up in a minute. Do that in a minute, yeah. Uh, we have a duty. Yeah, and then this is another scripture from the Bible. In 3 John, it says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, just as you are progressing spiritually. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's good to know that God is really concerned about what we put into our bodies yeah. he wants us to enjoy good health yeah and that you know, good health isn't uh, at the expense of just taking tablets you know? gosh no <laughs> we, we shouldn't be having to take so many tablets a day right. and if we are taking tablets what often happens is when you start taking tablets you take a tablet and they have to give you another tablet to counteract, counteract the tablets the that you're taking from that one. Yeah. yeah and so you know i think some of us rattle <laughs> yeah and, uh, and uh, if we can just step back and say, is there something different we can do? We've already seen people healed of different ailments mm. uh, on this course. Yeah, and, uh, especially pain, pain relief. Yeah. People have cut their pain relief or at least lowered it. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's great. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, health begins from what we feed our mm. bodies and yeah. our mind. Mm -hmm. So we like dairy. Yeah, we like um, milk and cheese and butter and cream. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it's very interesting uh, on, on how people observe it because you know, many people now, are they say, I'm in I can't, I can't touch dairy. dairy. I, I don't do dairy. No. I can't drink milk. I, I no. almost felt like, sounded like that comedian then. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we do appreciate that some people really can't yes, take dairy. But yeah. some of it, you know, if you go back 40 years, mm. The dairy intolerance was unheard of. Completely unheard of? Well, very little. Yeah. Yeah. Very little. And uh, a lot of these intolerances is, is uh, you know, I've been looking mm. at different uh, things, but a lot of it is because of the uh, state our inner body is in because of oh, the processed sugar. food mm. and the sugar that we've been consuming. Yeah. And when you, uh, 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 someone was saying to me the other day, they're dairy intolerant. Well, in fact, last night, someone was saying that their child was dairy intolerant but they don't have any problem drinking drink milk. Fully, full, yeah. full fat, natural, just pasteurized and from a cow. And so the intolerance, I believe, is coming from other things and, and then yeah. the milk comes in a as a, a of processed yeah. milk, uh, which is not the same. No. Anyway, mostly dairy products have about 5% carbs. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you know- Which the, isn't high. No. no, and when you take the fat 
out, the carb content goes up. Yeah. So you remove the fat, the carbs up. So there's more sugar in skim milk than in full fat milk. Yeah. And uh, phase two of the Harkham diet uh, says, uh, you know, low fat if you're eating carbs. Yes. Yeah, skim don't. milk yeah. if you're eating carbs because actual fat, fat and carbs together. Yeah. Excuse it's, me. It's, it's the two fuel sources in your body, isn't it? And mm. uh, you don't put them together. Also, dairy is full of fat soluble vitamins a d e and k so that so that means if i understand it rightly to make those vitamins work for your body you have to have fat absolutely yeah. and and uh, you know you can take you know so many people take supplements, supplements and vitamins and they you know wash it down with a glass of water i need to have my a d e and k or whatever vitamins you're having and unless you've got if there are fat soluble vitamin it which is straight through you yeah, yeah you're not gaining the benefit from it so if you're having a uh, cabbage boiled boiled cabbage or boiled uh spinach kale, kale, kale. We like which kale. we love yeah <laughs> to get the the nutrients out of those greens yeah you should put a bit of butter on it yeah fat olive oil if you don't like butter olive oil mm. or some coconut oil um but you know you want and also cabbage with butter on is delicious it's very tasty yeah so uh, really worth noting and that's the best way of getting your five a day yes. as well all you the know green, all the green veg. green vegetables much better than eating sugar laden fruit mm -hmm. uh, but that's another story for another day so uh vitamins that are in green veg they need to be fat you know they are fat, fat soluble. soluble so we need to eat our fat and uh, and when we talk of low carb you need to increase fat because if you just take away the carbs, you get hungry. I didn't say that, she said it. Oh, by the way, it's Sally, I'm John. We didn't do that bit at the beginning. No. <laughs> just in case you thought it was the other way around. Um, so we have a duty, do we? Yeah, yeah, we were either good witnesses or bad witnesses. Yeah. But we're all called to imitate Christ in all that we do. Yeah. And your, yeah. your feedback, I, uh, we'd appreciate your feedback. And it's great to receive letters from you. And uh, we are receiving letters and... Uh, Emails they, and yeah. WhatsApps. Uh, JB, yeah. no, what is it now? JB at Be Healthy Church. Yeah. Uh, JB at behealthychurch.co.uk. And uh, so send your comments, your feedback, mm -hmm. how this has helped you. We are amazed that we get emails from people. That and we, we and our uh, WhatsApp group is really good if you want to join yeah. that because there's a lot of encouragement and tips on that as well. Yeah, so it, it, it's, yeah. it's great. You get a chance to, uh, uh, we respond uh, and... Uh, Other uh, people respond. Yeah, <laughs> uh, people you never met respond. Mm -hmm. It's and, all about uh, making new friends as yeah. well. And yeah. uh, and encouragement. We encourage one another. Yeah. Uh, as we're on this journey of healthy lifestyle, and you know, we've got testimonies also of people that have dropped off uh, the wagon a little bit and uh, and uh, come back on. I think that's coming up in a, in a week or two. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, we love your feedback and like us also on YouTube and all the things you need to do because it promotes it and gets it out there. Mm -hmm. Now. Here's Dr. Becky with another video. Yeah, yep. be, a, be fat a fat burner. burner. And uh, uh, you, you can say, well, I try to, to burn fat. I, I try to get rid of my fat. I don't know how to do it. As soon as I stop eating, I get hungry. And, uh, you know, the, the book that Zoe wrote was saying, you know, why do I overeat when all I want to do is be thin? thin. Yeah. Why do we? We need to become a fat burner. We have to train our bodies to hey. become a fat burner. And I think she's going to tell us that. A little bit of that. Yeah. We have access to food around the clock, and many modern foods have been refined, changing the way our bodies handle them. These changes leave our metabolisms one-dimensional, making it hard to switch between running on both glucose and fat. In this video, I'll explain how to make your body more efficient at switching between whichever fuel source is available, and how that renewed metabolic flexibility will make you a better fat burner. The easiest way to think of metabolic flexibility is to think of a hybrid car. Hybrids can utilize both a gas-powered engine and an electric motor to run the vehicle. A metabolically flexible body is similar in that it runs efficiently on different fuel sources. In the case of the body, those fuels are glucose and fat.
So being metabolically flexible means that your body can efficiently switch to running on the most available fuel, which at any given time could be glucose from your diet or stored glucose, which is glycogen, dietary fat or stored fat, and if glucose is low enough, your liver turns some of the available fat into ketones, providing an additional type of fuel that is particularly beneficial to your brain. Being this metabolically efficient comes with some perks. Because your body always has an option to meet its energy needs, you experience sustained energy and freedom from hunger. And because a portion of your energy is coming from fat, you have an easier time with weight loss. Back in the days before we had highly processed foods and 24 seven access to foods, our bodies had no trouble with metabolic switching. However, our eating habits and food choices have changed. Many of the foods that are readily available have been highly refined and combined with unhealthy vegetable oils. The refining breaks down the original fiber and nutrients in the food, making them absorb into our systems quickly. That quick absorption coupled with the unhealthy fats leads to insulin resistance, which is a state in which the cells resist the onslaught of energy coming to them. If you eat multiple times a day, that constant feeding adds even more energy to your system that has nowhere to go. This nutrient overload, along with the development of insulin resistance, is thought to contribute to the impaired fuel switching that we see with metabolic inflexibility. If your goal is to lose weight, you want to become more metabolically flexible. You can do that by changing when you eat, how you move, and what you eat. Let's take a look at each one of these. Intermittent fasting is the practice of cycling between periods of eating and not eating or fasting. There are different ways to practice intermittent fasting, but a common form is time-restricted eating, meaning that you reduce or restrict the number of hours a day in which you are consuming food down to eight to 10 hours, for example. During those fasting hours, your body is using up the circulating glucose and then breaking down glycogen. When that energy is used up, your body must look for a new fuel source. What is available? Fat. So fasting forces your body to go through the trouble of breaking down fat for energy. The more this is practiced, the better your body becomes at switching to fat, improving your metabolic flexibility. Exercise is helpful because it improves insulin sensitivity. Insulin sensitive cells are more efficient at switching between burning glucose and fat. Now, while there is some argument for intense exercise like weightlifting or high intensity interval training being the most helpful, any increase in physical activity will help. What you choose to eat is certainly an important factor in this equation. The most important first step is to choose whole foods over processed or refined foods. So think of foods that still resemble the original plant or animal that they came from rather than foods that come in a box. The slower absorbing whole foods trickle energy into your system instead of overtaxing your system with energy that must get stored. An additional step you can take is lowering the overall carbohydrate intake of your diet. Carbohydrates break down into glucose. If you limit the glucose coming in, your body must move to the next available fuels, which are glycogen and fat. If enough glucose is depleted, your liver makes ketones out of the fatty acids, raising your metabolic flexibility to an even higher level. The interesting thing to note is that you don't need to be on a ketogenic diet for your body to make ketones. Ketones are needed by your brain when glucose is too low. So any action you take that depletes glucose could lead to ketone production. For instance, I do not follow a keto diet, but I do eat a low carb diet and practice intermittent fasting. So it is not unusual for me to test my blood in the morning and notice the presence of ketones. So you can make your body more metabolically flexible and therefore train it to be a better fat burner. To do so, practice intermittent fasting, get more physically active, and reduce the overall carbohydrate content of your diet, especially refined carbs. If you're interested in learning which foods are healthy, low carb choices, I have a downloadable list of 100 plant and animal based low carb foods. And I will point to where you can get that list here on the video and below in the description area. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when my next video is released. Till then, have a great week. 
No, thank you, Dr. Becky. She does a good job in her presentations of uh, uh, all of them, and uh, she does another one with her husband uh, called Two Fit Docs, I think. That's right, Two Fit Docs yeah, and, on YouTube. Yeah, um, and very worth checking out. Great stuff, uh, and uh, so no doubt we will be having more from Dr. Becky in the days, weeks to come. So, a discussion for yourself. Yes, to things to think about. Uh, or even uh, discuss in our Zoom meeting afterwards. Mm -hmm. How's your, your week been? Are you feeling good about your progress? Mm -hmm. Are you feeling good about your progress? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not fallen off the wagon yet. No. <laughs> and uh, it, I mean, we find it quite easy. Yeah, because it's become a habit. And we're both doing it. And we mm. understand that if you're in a household where only one is doing it, it's not as easy, but it ultimately is a decision. Mm. Um, yeah. Do you need to lose weight? Set yourself a target. Yeah, if you've, if you've reached your target, and, and, but you can still do the healthy eating. Yeah. Yeah, you but just don't, you, your body stops losing weight, actually, doesn't it? When it gets to a certain point, yeah. you, won't, you won't just keep we disappearing. We won't fade away. No. And no. also, if you've lost a couple of stone, but to be in your real area of BMI, all right, to get there, you still need to lose a couple more. Don't stop. No, it will go. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. And if you find it's not going anywhere, try cutting back the portion size a little bit. Mm. You know, if you are eating two pots of clotted cream a week and you want to lose weight, <laughs> I'm not pointing at anyone in particular. You might just want to cut back to one, one pot. <laughs> pot of clotted cream a week. But, you know, because we need to leave space for our, our bodies to burn the fat. Yeah. So uh, you're feeling uh, health benefits, no doubt, if you've been following this for a while, and uh, yeah. perhaps you've had some healing. We, we certainly sleep um, well, don't we? Yeah. 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 We have the odd night when there's something going on in the family or whatever, but yeah, 90% yeah, oh. of the time. Or well, something's going on up here. Yeah. <laughs> or something to think about. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, yeah. men have a way of turning off their brains better than women. So that's very, very true. Yeah. And mm. if you want to laugh one day, watch the difference between a man and a woman's brain on YouTube. You'll find it. Mm -hmm. It'll give you a laugh. Mm. Um, so if you're not losing weight or you, perhaps you've gone off the wagon, you perhaps need to go back to phase one of Zoe's diet for a few days. Yeah. And, and, and uh, keeping a diary, just jot down what you've been eating. And that, that also, the fact that you've got to write it down, stops you eating. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah, do yeah. that. Excellent. So, who is right? Is it okay to eat saturated fats and dairy products? Again, you've got an argument from uh, two sides of the fence. You've got some doctors that say saturated fat is it's, going to kill you. It's going to give you a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, who's right? This is a, a, a bit that was on. This was a, an interview on BBC World News. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, very good. This doctor is excellent. Yeah. So is he a doctor? He's yeah, a doctor. He's a doctor. Yeah. So uh, let's have a listen to this. They say that we are missing the point. Well, heart specialist Asim Malhotra is behind the report and is with me now. So interesting to have you with us. This is blowing up traditional wisdom, all the things we've been told for years. What is the point then? The reality, Lucy, is that we, you know, decades of advice to lower blood cholesterol through reducing saturated fat in the diet and also the use of drugs has failed to um, eradicate, if you like, the epidemic of heart disease. It's still one of the biggest killers in the Western world. And the reason for that is the focus has been misguided. It's been wrong, essentially. We know that saturated fat, um, based upon very robust data and studies now, shows that there is no association with the development of heart disease or type 2 diabetes or death. In fact, there is some data suggesting that saturated fat from dairy products actually may protect against heart disease and type 2 diabetes. It's bad for you in other ways, though, saturated fat, well, surely? Well, actually, you know, there are different, different types of saturated fat and they have different effects. What we need to be doing is focusing on, on real, you know, non-processed foods. It's interesting, there's also been a bit of a, uh, there's a misguided information on, um, for example, you know, you have a picture of a burger and fries and people think high in saturated fat. Well, actually, the actual meat, the red meat, the burger, has less than 10% saturated fat. The real problem with that food are the refined carbohydrates, which are the white bread, the, the bun, if you like, um, deep fried in vegetable oil, potatoes or, you know, the chips. 
That's where the problem is. But what we're trying to do in this editorial is also shift the focus to where the underlying real cause of heart disease is, and that's based upon um, the number one risk factor, which is insulin resistance. Essentially, your body over time become re resistant to the hormone insulin, basically foods that push up your glucose persistently, um, and also um, lifestyle factors such as sedentary lifestyle, um, which means lack of exercise, but you can solve these problems by simple changes such as walking just 30 minutes a day. And the third thing is stress. Stress has a big impact on heart disease and we need to think more about how we cope with stress, getting better sleep. So if we shift the focus towards insulin resistance and inflammation, which is what causes the furring of the arteries in the first place, away from um, the obsession with lowering cholesterol, which hasn't in, in good quality data, low cholesterol through diet has never benefited people either with established heart disease who haven't had it in reducing death rates or heart attacks, then we will be able to really combat at least 80% of heart disease. But why have we had this obsession then with lowering cholesterol? People got to get their cholesterol measured all the time. We yeah. buy things in the shops yeah. as well that say they promise to lower cholesterol. Yeah. Is that part of the issue? It's, it's, a it's, a, it's the root cause of the problem and because what's happened is we focus on this, food industry have come in, they've then started marketing low cholesterol foods loaded with sugar, we're now consuming too much sugar. It was based upon flawed science, basically. I think the original research um, had the best will and intentions to think that this would help, but it clearly hasn't uh, to a significant degree. The biggest decline in death rates from heart disease that have happened in the last 30 years have happened because of reduction in smoking, which needed health policy changes, um, and reduction in trans fats um, in foods. So if we go to it more back to a traditional way of living where we're eating non-processed food, and we're exercising every day just simply, just by walking, and we think about combating stress, we will be able to eradicate heart disease. But what we're up against is really an establishment that, um, in my view, is too close to industry. So one of the problems we have is that we have a multi-billion dollar industry that benefits or from this or profits from this message about lowering cholesterol, both through diet and drugs. But that industry also has co-opted universities, influential scientists, even charities, to then give information which are based on half-truths. And, you know, that's why we have a healthcare crisis right now. I'm just reading some of the criticism of your findings, yeah. or your, your report, saying it's simplistic, muddled, and misleading. Yeah. More specifically, because yeah. uh, this doctor says, decades of research have proved that a diet rich in saturated fat increases bad LDL cholesterol in yeah. your blood, yeah. and that puts you at greater risk of heart attack I'm very, or stroke. I'm very glad you've, you've said that. Um, Unfortunately, whoever gave that comment is, uh, is not, you know, up to date with the science. Um, saturated fat does increase so-called bad uh, cholesterol LDL, but there's two things to say. It also increases the good cholesterol HDL, so the overall effect on cholesterol profile is neutral at best. The second thing to say is very interesting. I was involved in some research published last year which showed if you're over 60, high LDL, the so-called bad cholesterol, is not associated with heart disease and is inversely associated with mortality. In other words, you're, gonna, um, you're less likely to die. The reason for that is cholesterol is a very vital molecule in the body. It's not just about the heart, it protects in the immune system as well. Great to have you with us. Mediterranean diet, no stress and exercise are the key messages. Very simple. They? Great to have you with us, thank you. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? I see, once upon a time, I would have been tempted by the cakes and the, the sugary things in the back, mm. but I'm not tempted now. No, no, because you know what harm it can do to your body. Yeah, yeah. And just eating a little bit of it yeah. can make you feel uh, quite rough. So, here's a, a, a lovely picture. I think we bought this one up last time. Uh, and uh, uh, do we know what uh, koala bears eat? Koala bears eat, oh, gosh, leaves. Uh, what's it begin with E? Do you I know? know? I've forgotten the name of it myself. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, you can see the picture, yeah. um, but... Um, eucalyptus. That's it. it. That's the one. <laughs> eucalyptus. And uh, if you feed them anything else, they get sick. They don't breed. No. And, they, and, and so that it's a big problem. Uh, uh, giraffes eat, obviously, from trees. That's, that's, yeah, that's why they got a long neck. Yeah, that, and leaves. Yeah. Uh, um, but they'll also, they can eat grass and things. Uh, you know, the old um, uh, lion and... The, the lion will eat the meat. Yeah. But they're all animals that are designed to eat what they eat. And we, uh, another th uh, reference that Zoe made once, uh, you know, the human is the only person that makes his own food of combinations and then is foolish enough to eat it. <laughs> because we make ourselves sick. And uh, 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 one of the things that we'll be looking at is, is uh, actually what you can eat in, in real food and what you shouldn't eat. And I've studied with... The uh, Noakes. Yeah, well done, Foundation. John. Yes. Well done, John. <laughs> give, I, him, give him a round of applause. Yeah. He's got a certificate. So the P for those that yeah. want to know is not pastor. 
it's Philip. Philip. And uh, so I'm uh, Philip John. But I thought, you know, I have been studying for that. And we asked the question at the beginning of how many hours nowadays does a GP get on nutrition training? And they asked uh, students as they were leaving college, how many hours have you had on nutrition? What would you think the answer was? I didn't ask you this just now. <laughs> Sal, I had no idea I was going to ask you this question. Well, I know it's not very high, yeah. but I don't know how many. Well, yeah. around two hours. Oh, like one lecture. Around yeah. two hours on nutrition it's training. Not a, not a lot, is it? No. When uh, we there are was, what we eat. There were some people, yeah. some doctors in older surveys said uh, uh, seven to eight hours. Uh, I mean, I have, if it's two hours, I've done more than 10 times the amount of training mm. than a doctor has on nutrition. Mm. Now, please don't get me wrong. I am no doctor. But understanding how, how uh, food uh, uh, relates and yeah. how, uh, you know, and what we eat is so important. And uh, so, you know, that is great. But I am now a nutrition network advisor so if you've got a specific problem, yeah. you know, contact me and I'll do my best to help. And if, if he can't, we'll point you into the right direction. We will try our best. Yeah. Uh, soon I'll have that little logo on the bottom of our, of our teaching, which is great. Uh, now, one of the things that we've, which you can have, uh, we can send you. If you uh, write to us with your email address, we will send you uh, three lists, the green list, the red list and the orange list. Orange list. And uh, I'm not going to read through all these uh, ingredients, uh, but these on the green list. Uh, it's everything that you can eat. Yeah. It's a traffic light system. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Green, orange, red. Yeah. Green, amber, red. Green, amber, red. We won't go into which order they go because if you're watching from another country, they might change the order. I don't know. <laughs> um, but green always means go. Green always means good for you. Uh, you can eat this food and you will thrive. Um, and uh, yeah, some of the things may be slightly different to uh, Zoe's, but it, all in all, they are good. Yeah. I noticed that Zoe's, when I, I just had this certificate and I noticed the lectures, some of the lectures that are coming up on, on my nutrition uh, network, um, is uh, Zoe is one of the tutors. Oh, she? Oh, good. Yeah, uh, which is great. And uh, so... This is the green list. You need to uh, uh, read this through, mm -hmm. uh, ask for a copy, and uh, this is the red list. Foods that you avoid, mm -hmm. all right? Please do not eat them. And uh, you will see things on there, and you'll think, well, I, I enjoy that. I can't actually read. It's too small for me Just, to read, yeah. um, but on, on the screen. But uh, we will be uh, emailing those out to you, uh, we can also, I don't, can we send them on WhatsApp? Probably. If we yeah, can yeah. send them on WhatsApp, we will. But we I need your not. details to have this uh, free. We can send it to you. You can print off your own copies and uh, you will gain a lot from it. And then uh, it says the basic rules of banting. Well, low carb and high fat is, banting. is a banting yeah. type diet. What is different from the early banting diets is that they now increase the uh, levels of uh, vegetables and, uh, and, uh, in, in the diet. It's banting the name of a person. Yeah, yeah. He, he was, he originated, and if you look up the details, it was, it was uh, uh, many, many years ago mm. and uh, came up with the banting diet, but it, it has modified. And uh, as uh, Nutrition Network Advisors, this is where we would recommend people go. Uh, one of the things that Zoe's thing does, it gives you a nice start into the process. Yeah, definitely. Phase one is Phase the one best is way to brilliant. start. Yeah. And, uh, and then yeah. you will learn about whether or not you're carbohydrate intolerant or not, as the case may be, whether you mm -hmm. can handle some carbs, mm -hmm. because we're all different. We're all uniquely and wonderfully yeah. made. That's what's great about us all, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great that everyone isn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I said, email us. Uh, send us messages, somehow get hold of this list. Uh, you may find it online, um, but uh, email it and you'll get a copy sent uh, to yourselves on a PDF that you can print, you can stick on your fridge, and you will know then 
uh, uh, what you can, what you can't eat. If you really want to make, be, be serious okay. about health. health and losing weight. And remember, it's not just losing weight. There are a lot of thin people out there that if we look inside, they're not looking too healthy. Oh, right. The 10 commandments on eating. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because Sally and I can't quite see the screen that we're recording on to, to read it. So we may be looking down occasionally here to uh, get the, the words. Um, so number one, it's about eating when hungry and stopping when satisfied. All too often, you know, uh, because of what we're taught from children, yeah. you've got to finish got what's to finish on your, your plate. plate. Mm. We are telling you, and Sally has told me uh, many times, it's just as well to throw it in the bin. Yeah, it's to eat it if you don't need it. Yeah, and, and you know, or save it for another meal. You know, re yeah, yeah. reheated food. Actually, if you, I don't know if we, we I don't know if we've spoken about this, but if you reheat um, uh, yeah. dishes, yeah. it cuts the carb content. Yeah. If you freeze something, if you make yourself a a, um, a, a cottage pie using cauliflower mash instead of mm. uh, potatoes. Um, uh, and when you refree, uh, freeze it and thaw it out again, it, it does something to the um, carbohydrates in it, and there isn't much in it anyway, no. but it lowers. When you freeze and reheat, it lowers the carbohydrate content. Yeah, so that's also saving you time cooking. Yeah, <laughs> and also, it, it, I mean, if, if you have to have a half a slice of toast, all right, frozen bread and then toasted, is less carbs. It lessens. It doesn't spike the uh, uh, insulin, insulin levels so much. So much. So interesting. Sal, do you read number two? Eat clean, fresh, real food. Real food goes off and has a very short life. Do not eat processed or prepackaged food. Yeah. So at the moment we're going shopping once a week because of the COVID, but um, that is, that is true. Some of the fresh food doesn't keep quite so. No, um, why? Why is that? Because it hasn't, it been, hasn't processed. been processed. You know, but yeah. real food does go off. Yeah. You can't help it. So uh, go shopping more than once a week. If you, well, well, if you we have can. to, we'll put it in the fridge. Or, yeah. Oh, we survive. Yeah. On fresh food for a week, don't we? Yeah, cook it and freeze it. Yeah, mm. if it's a problem. Mm. So make sure that you include fats, proteins, and healthy carbs um, in all your meals. All right. One of the, the, the and try to make sure you only have three meals a day. Um, and your meal should be nutritionally dense, well balanced. You can read that better than I can or we can. Uh, but what, what's important is so often people, we've, we've been trained not to eat fat. Yeah, so that makes us hungry, so we eat more yeah. meals. So if you're making a snacking. soup, if you're making something which you put some fat in, please put some fat in. So put some, pour some olive oil in when you finish and stir it up and mix it. And uh, now my, even my telephone is going now. Mm -hmm. So uh, put some uh, fat in and mix it, whatever you need to do um, uh, uh, for, to get, uh, to make sure you're eating some fat. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So where are we? Number four. Do not eat. Don't eat more than three meals a day. There is no rule dictating which time of day you should eat. You should just eat three meals a day yeah. or, or only two if, if, um, if that's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the secret is, if you can, stop, I might say so in a minute, but uh, stop at, uh, don't eat after six if you can avoid it in the evening. Yeah, and have your breakfast. six, seven yeah. o'clock and have your breakfast as, as late, late as, as possible. You can, or depending on how your day goes. Yeah. yeah, and that's called intermittent fasting. We'll do that another time. Do not have sweeteners in your coffee or tea. That's because you're tricking your brain into thinking it's getting something sweet. Yeah. So yeah. that could spark the insulin off. Yeah. yeah. And drink water throughout the day, but only when you're thirsty. You know, yeah. this nonsense that you need to drink three liters of water a day, or you need to drink so much. If you drink when you're thirsty, you'll be fine. Yeah. If you're in the Sahara Desert, you're going to drink more water than if you're living in some ice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's pretty obvious. So uh, drink when you're thirsty. Make sure you get enough vitamins and minerals. If you're uh, experiencing energy loss at the beginning, you may need supplements only at the beginning because if you're eating real food, you should be getting them all. You should yeah. be fine. 
don't drink any fizzy drinks, fruit juices or slimming drinks, not even if they claim to be sugar-free because they all have that artificial sweeteners and additives in it, which have a negative effect on our health and weight. Yeah, the only thing I would, uh, I would add to that is I don't think carbonated water isn't going to hurt you at all. It's got no additives in it. No, no. it's just carbonated water. And yeah. I quite like carbonated water. Do not snack between we meals unless you're really hungry. And, uh, and if you do... Yeah, have, have three or nuts. four nuts, yeah, or a bit of cold meat or, yeah. Sometimes yeah. I might put a little bit of that um, yogurt the plain yogurt in a little glass and have that with a cup of tea in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so remember well, that's not going to hurt you at no. all. And what works for me may not work no. for you. Yeah. We've noticed that for certain. Haven't we? Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're, all we're all unique. unique. So there's a little recap that if you need to. Yeah. We've, well, we've been through this last week. Didn't and we? I think yeah. <clears throat> this got sent out on the WhatsApp yeah, group as well. On the WhatsApp group. So, and things like this can be sent to one another. So do join in, uh, become a member. And then if there's something that needs reminding, uh, then yeah, we that, can, that can remind be sent. each other. Yeah. And uh, we, we won't go through that, but you know, that's remember that how high carb works and how low carb works. Mm. And if you've been on uh, um, uh, a high carb, you need to change, but remember the important thing, include fat. And LCHF is low carb, High fat. fat. Some people put low carb, healthy fat. Um, but you know, if you if you know, remember the things that we've been spoken about, you know what's healthy and what isn't healthy. Uh, yeah. So join us on Zoom. Yes. Which is the same details as last week. But if you haven't got them, get in touch and we'll give them to you. Yeah. And uh, we do have some fun and we do a mm. uh, chat and uh, it, it's really people helping people. Even if you're on a different week. All right. If you want to come into Zoom, it doesn't matter. If no. you've just watched session one and we're on session six but or eight or seven, it doesn't matter because it, it's at 8.30 on a Tuesday. Yeah, it's only on 8.30 on a Tuesday. You can't come at any other any time. Other time no. But uh, that would be great if you can make it. Some reasons why we don't succeed. Yeah, just remember that every day is a new day. You can always start again. Yep. Yeah. And Check. Your goal. Yeah, write it down if you haven't done already. You know, without a goal, people perish. Mm. Make a note of what you're eating. And remember, nobody fails. It's better to have tried and then have to start again yeah. than to have never tried. Yeah, absolutely. And I can do all things in Christ that gives me strength. So you can come through and uh, picture yourself in three months' time. Mm. And uh, you'll find it's much different. Mm -hmm. So we come to the end, Sal. Mm. Session seven session with seven. phone calls and different things yeah. going on, uh, but we made it through yeah. and uh, we love to see you in Zoom if you can make it. If not, I'll see you next week yeah. or any time in the week that you put YouTube on. <laughs> yeah. Be blessed. Yeah. Have a great week. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. That's all, folks.